Welcome to Sutures and Sense, where Tegaderm meets top line and surge of flow meets soft costs. In ambulatory surgery centers and hospital operating rooms, we talk clinical to business people and business to clinical people. I'm Mark Copeland. He's Ryan Pistone. We are Sutures and Sense. Ryan, today's episode is the second part of our interview with Emily Spooner, who, if you recall, Emily's the CEO uh, and owner of the South Florida Same Day Surgery Center in Pompano Beach, Florida. And Emily is a really interesting, innovative, forward thinking person who, uh, who I thought what's so interesting about her is she is extremely tech savvy, yet uses it to make the patient experience and the personal part of healthcare extremely personal. You know, so what I'm interested in when, when we talk to her were, from my perspective, the two things that I thought were how she uses social media to answer very common questions patients have and also educate them um, beforehand so that they know why they shouldn't eat before they have surgery. I, I had never thought of that. And the other part, um, that how she sees patient satisfaction and employee happiness is not two separate things, but how they're very connected and linked. Um, for on a on a multitude of levels, so I I just thought those two things were fascinating. How about you, Ryan? Yeah, I I, I agree, and I'll I'll kind of respond in reverse, right? So like the employee satisfaction, and you know, I mean, the, yeah, the employee and patient satisfaction, right? Her her big thing is that stuck out to me was like love love your patients. I mean, not love your uh, love your patients, love your employees, right? Love your employees. If you love your employees, you lead by example. They're gonna they're going to do what they're supposed to do and that benefits and happy patients. Um, you know, that, that's something that I, I don't think again, being in a lot of places that are not independent and tied to major health networks or, um, you know, large, large ambulatory surgery center networks. Um, they just, it's not something that they do. Uh, maybe they really focus on patient satisfaction but like the employee satisfaction kind of, you know, their employees, we have 10,000 of them. We can't focus on everyone. Emily has the ability to basically focus on people individually. Um, and then the, the marketing with the social media, right, for, for patients, that's like inbound marketing 101. So I love it, right? Because yeah. when you look at, again, these major health networks, when they put out patient education stuff, it's boring, boring highly highly processed videos that cost probably fifteen thousand dollars about a doctor talking about oh we just put in this cool robot and it's gonna allow me to do all these cool like it's not it it doesn't relate to people right or it's you know um shout out mayo clinic but when you look at like they have an amazing database of information for patients, but it's in written out form. And who wants to sit down and read something? Not me. Uh, I know that's offensive to you as an English major, right? But then when you look at what she, what Emily's doing, Emily is putting out like, I don't want to call them, they're low cost, right? Because they're probably being filmed on a, on a phone, which, you know, uh, your iPhone or Android, if you're Mark, shoots in 4K. So you can shoot beautiful videos with that. Right. And they're they're low budget, but in a good way, because that means that they have a higher uh, higher chance of getting an ROI on that. Right. She can probably record a video, edit it, get it out in the same day. And it's, you know, hey, we, we keep getting these patients asking this question. Can we make a video about it? Oh, yeah, let's do it right now. Right. Yeah. That's 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 re that's being agile. That's being, you know. And I think it's going to help patients and it's going to slowly, you know, slow curve and then of people looking at, at her as a resource. So I think it's, it's great what she's doing. So I guess this yeah. is the part where, where we stop talking and we pass it over <laughs> to past, our past selves. So where we throw it um, over to our interview. Yeah, yeah we throw it over with, to the interview. With South, Emily, so. South Florida, same day surgery center, CEO, Emily Spooner. That's that I like that. So let's go to your, let's talk about social media then. Uh, um, I have noticed that I think, I think your the social media 
that you have on LinkedIn is excellent, both yours and your facilities. I haven't seen anything else. I haven't seen TikTok or your Instagram or <laughs> any of that stuff. Um, what's your What's your plan on that? Did you have a plan when you started? Do you have a plan? You know, uh, we just saw how the world was moving and wanted to be able to keep up with the times. And like I said, we did research on who and what and when and how, what was on what type of social media, what platform they were on, uh, what they were looking at, and really kind of tried to target those areas. Mm -hmm. Um, But also it's to help show our patients that we do have a social media presence. The patients are on social media all day, every day. And to know that we are trying to provide the best quality care by finding the best quality surgeons, um, I social media is everything. That's what everyone is doing all day. And so it, just providing that education piece to it. Yeah, but we're not seeing, I think we were talking a little earlier, I'm not seeing anybody else in ambulatory surgery centers do what you're doing. And I think it's awesome. Like we were talking about oh, this earlier, you. that- that's that webinar series where you were showing um, the malignant hypothermia cart. And I think, I think it was the, also the, um, was it the uh, uh, airway? might've been the airway. Oh, okay. Emergency. I can't airways. remember, but like you're explaining that to people. Who do you, who's the audience for that? The regular patient, the patient that doesn't work in healthcare, that knows nothing about healthcare. Hmm. Sorry. I just dropped it's my okay. AirPods. <laughs> I I wouldn't worry Uh, about it at all. uh, The the regular people, and we started it, and it was the feedback that I got, honestly, from my family. (laughs) It was like, you know, the first ones that I'm like, please watch this. Tell me, tell me what you think if we're going in the right direction. And they were like, yeah, I had no idea that you had you you could have an allergy to anesthesia. So most people don't know that unless they have a family member or someone that's done that. So when we do a pre-op phone call and we say, do you have, do you, have you had malignant hyperthermia? Has anyone in your family had malignant hyperthermia? What's that? You know, and having to explain that every single day, all day, those are the things that I targeted because the lay person, hopefully Hmm. our Emily and SoFlo becomes a little bit more popular. The regular people that are looking to have ambulatory surgery or any type of surgery will understand the risks and benefits of surgery, not only in an ambulatory center, but those things happen in the hospital too. So all of the opportunities that we have to actually educate the real person. And that was the, that was the feedback that I got from our, from our first couple of series was like, yeah, this is, I had no idea that you had to have a crash cart or a defibrillator or that yeah. that you had med gases in the wall and it's piped in gas and all of the inspections and the things that you have to go through. You know, someone told me one time, Mark, and I found this very interesting. Oh, I wish I had such a cush job like you. You have no idea the patient's lives that are in my hands every day. And I take it personally. That surgeon that I worked for for 17 years, one day he told me there was a screw up in the OR. Somebody threw a sample away and we dug through the trash and we did all of this. And, and he said to my face and I will never forget it. Emily, it is ultimately your responsibility. Everything that happens in this place is your responsibility. And I took that to heart and I took that very seriously. Every single one of my staff is working under me and my guidance. And it is my responsibility. So ever since then, I truly believe that and I feel that way. And I hold my employees to that high standard too. And they are the happiest employees I feel like because they know exactly what my expectations are, where they are. There's nothing. I'm having the same conversations with them that I'm having with you. Very open, honest conversations. Yeah. They know exactly where I stand. And I think that's what provides the best quality care. Your employees are happy. They're going to treat your patients like you treat your patients. I'm very specific and intentional when hiring staff because I want those same staff that feel the same way about I do, the same way that I do, the same desire to actually help people and make a difference in healthcare. And I want to find those same surgeons too. Uh, this is this is going to be, have you ever read, do you know who the Savannah Bananas are? 
So they're a baseball team out of Savannah, and they're owned by this guy Jesse Cole. And do they do I, the dances and yes, stuff? Right. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. And I yeah. just I just listened to his newest audiobook. You literally just like it's and it's weird because healthcare doesn't do this. Other businesses do this, but healthcare doesn't do what you're doing. And it's like I was, I was like, did she did she read the book and just do everything that they, that they, that they <laughs> I saw him do? doing a dance on TikTok, I think. That's yeah. about it. Uh, <laughs> no, it's it's fascinating because it's just it's not something that healthcare I mean, and Mark Mark and I talk about this all the time with like marketing and healthcare. It's like when it comes to healthcare, it's just it's ages behind everybody else with how how they do things and how they treat people and how they market themselves yeah. and how they explain things to people and it's like if you just do what you're doing and acting the way like like i i know we're gonna say it a million times but like you don't have to then force like patient surveys to be filled out to make you look good because people are just <laughs> just doing it and if you if you create a really great environment for everyone to work in guess what everyone's happy it's not like and everyone comes to work on time and yeah. they do the best job. They do such a better job. And honestly, I have a following at all of the states that I've worked in. I have lots of people that still continue to work for me in all of these different places. And I love my employees. They're part of me. I love mm. them. And I want them to know that I love them. And when they feel that from an employer or even from a mentor, they're going to work harder for you. Yeah. They are going yeah. to do it all by themselves. You don't have to do anything except for love them. And I feel the same way about my patients. So if you can do that and truly love them, they they are going to they're going to provide the best care for your patients too. It's, uh, it, 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 it's, it's so nice to hear somebody talk about this in a way that's not like a H, like an H caps, you know, uh, form you got to fill out. Like when you say patient satisfaction, you're actually you actually mean it like the Savannah Bananas or like Chick Fil A or like uh, uh, the Four Seasons, right? Like that's what you're talk. That's the kind of experience you're talking about. And Ry knows because I, I I go crazy. Like there's so little of that in healthcare, and it's. You think about it. It's some of the most intimate interactions you're ever going to have are mm -hmm. in healthcare with, with your doctor, you're having surgery. You're like, um, they literally lay hands on you. That is, you know, they cut you open. Yeah. I, I mean, your you, life is in their hands. Right. And, and, and to go into some sterile building where nobody wants to talk to you, they're behind glass. They fill out this form, you know, mm -hmm. A license and registration is what they might as well say. It, it's it's so, oh, it's just such an awful experience, and everybody has to participate, right? Like, there's nobody that doesn't have health or lack of it, but like, so right. somebody's. It, it's it's fascinating. So tell me, so Ryan brought up a point a couple minutes ago that you're clearly doing things differently. Like this is from a qualitative standpoint, if you want to talk about it, it's like, an, it, it's like a, a personal thing, but, but that's part of your competitive advantage. And now I get it. Like if I'm having, if my surgeon books my surgery at your facility, I want to look it up. I'm like, oh, hold it. Malign I didn't know about malignant hypothermia. That's interesting. And it's, it's this Emily person. It's this Emily person. Then I find and out she's the owner. See me. Then I find out I see her when I'm they're rolling me back. Like that that's an entirely different experience that you don't get in healthcare. So I admire that. And I I mean, I have no doubt it's it's successful already and going to be even more so. But you were talking about like you've given us a couple examples of how sort of behind the times. Uh, healthcare is now and, and ambulatory surgery business specifically, but I, I think the whole most of healthcare is that. And you were you were the one who told me you were piloting a software, um, and I was looking at it. And I'm less, although I found the software pretty interesting. I've never done your job, right? But I looked at it, I'm like, well, I feel like I could, you could put me behind a desk and I could do, I could probably figure this thing out in a day or two. It looked that intuitive. Five but minutes. Are you? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of really what it looked easy. like. It looked like yeah. Trello. It looked like um, it looked like yeah. any other, <laughs> right? Doesn't it? Doesn't it look like yeah, Trello? Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, um, so, do you? Uh, 
how what do you you are trying to streamline the process what what's what's your goal with that you're the pilot what are you trying to learn so, from it or do with it the the best part about this software is the fact that it was actually designed by admins and people that are using it all day, every day. So I was approached by these people that had done a ton of market research and shocked me by saying, did you know that ambulatory healthcare and their software is behind the times by like 12 years? And I was like, excuse me. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, the banking, financing, all of these under other industries are so much more advanced. And I don't want to say the other two names because I've been affiliated with them of the two big software companies, but I was a huge proponent of specific ASC software. And mm. so when I was approached by this and like, oh my gosh, they just showed me like five seconds worth. And they were like, Emily, we want you to help us build this. I was like, yes, sign me up. <laughs> Anything that I can make this all better and in a private practice space also, and it's not all about big corporate. Absolutely. You know, this small group of people have done the research and realized what was missing in ASC healthcare. And so being able to be all integrated and built up all at the same time without having to have interfacing from a billing software to a scheduling software, to a registration software, to a materials management software. I mean, credentialing software, all of this is in one preference cards, assigning equipment, um, every part of the scheduling process and revenue cycle management process is included. But not only that, but the credentialing of your employees, of your staff, um, assigning the rooms and the staff to the room. Also conflict management, honestly, because not only, or conflict resolution between maybe equipment or maybe staff you know, you're able to choose those parameters when scheduling, but also you're saving money in the sense, especially for a smaller ASC, because you don't have to pay that FTE to schedule surgeries in your center, that that's all they're doing is scheduling surgeries. Right. Because right. the training takes about 20 minutes of each surgeon's office, and you're teaching that scheduler how to get in and look at that at their line, at their block time, or at any open block time, and be able to schedule their own case. And yeah. it's then you can go in, me, myself, or any of my people, and say, yes, that's okay, no, that's not okay, all by the click of a button. Everything is right there. Being they can schedule the anesthesia provider if they choose. They can they can schedule any kind of equipment and set a specific standing orders for that surgeon. All of those standing orders are built in there based on the procedure or based on however we want them to be. So <laughs> if, if that case requires a C arm, that equipment will be included. If it, if it includes, or if it's necessary to have like a, a, a Bovi or anything like that, you're able to assign that, especially if you have multiple ORs and only a certain number of specific equipment. You're yeah. able to do all of that. So the conflict resolution between the equipment and the staffing is amazing. Also, just the 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 data, you know, the data that we're able to capture, the analytics and and all of the automation, honestly, that comes along with this. Let's say that we have a a, a specific code that continues to get denied. You got a hundred denials because of the same thing. Our AI is able to automatically fix that and resubmit that claim without mm. anybody having to touch it. <laughs> so yeah. it, that is above and beyond anything else that's out there. <laughs> and I know well, you, because you, I've used those. Because you've used <laughs> so. it. Well, you know, it's funny. We we interviewed a guy, um, mm -hmm. Dr. Doug Weiser, who was CEO of National Spine and Pain at one point. And they had, you know, 100-some offices. Um, and they had a bunch of ambulatory surgery centers. And we were asking him, like, look, if you're an ambulatory surgery center and you're trying to – you're trying to figure out how to navigate the next 10 years of this changing and reimbursements and site neutrality and all this stuff, right? And value-based care. He was saying, one of the first things he said sort of offhandedly was, well, you know, get your prior authorization process in order, you know? And I did, we didn't really explore that with him, but I see this with surgeons who are like, oh yeah, we had the case. It was booked for tomorrow. It was canceled. No cardiac clearance, right? And I'm like, what do you mean no cardiac clearance? And they're like, yeah, I just lost, right? It's, it's like it's – and that that always struck me as a system problem. Like that it 
is that what I it looked like this system does some of that. Yes. That's, yes, it right? absolutely does. It absolutely does. Even inventory management AI, you know, being able to automatically submit orders because your system is telling you you did this many cases. These cases are complete, so we need some more of this because it keeps track of all of your inventory and your materials management. I'm working with some of the bigger distributors also that hopefully will be integrated into their into their um, ordering systems. So we will be interfacing with those big companies, uh, McKesson, Medline, and so on. Right, um, I was to be able to ask order you. directly to order directly from our own software. Like everything will be in one one place, and it. it it's just going to be so much easier for all ASCs. It's really going to blow up the market, I really believe. Well, it, just from looking at what I printed out, <laughs> which sounds stupid, printing out the software. <laughs> Duh. Right? <laughs> but We're trying to go paperless step, here. <laughs> I know. I know. And I almost was embarrassed to say it. But this, like the, the, the printout, when I look at the printout, I seriously, I've never done that. I've never been an administrator. I've never been a surgery scheduler. I sat there and said, I think I could do it. Like, I think with this, I could do this. And it seemed like what an administrator would make if an administrator made software mm -hmm. for a surgery center. And this is not a commercial. Yeah. We haven't mentioned them. I don't not even know all. who they are. But I thought it was a good example of problems are like these problems that we see in ambulatory surgery centers and hospitals, uh, ORs. Um, I, I, like this thing looks like it's the kind of thing that people need in those places. Mm -hmm. But you see it, honestly, you see that kind of stuff at the McDonald's drive through because that's, they've got to keep things moving and it does like it keeps it or, and they have new people constantly coming in. It has to be easy. Um, mm -hmm. And, when when we when I talk about that to people in healthcare, they look at me like I have ten heads, and I'm like, look, I might oh, have. Oh, you mean you don't need heads. to use twenty seven different programs to do the exact same thing? I mean, right, right. I or, mean, right. my job is truly to fix processes, right? Yeah. To make things more easy for everyone, not only for the patient, for the staff, for uh, for the surgeons, for anesthesia for everybody, for my materials people. Let's just make it all together. Nobody has to even leave their seat if they don't want to. They can work from home and do this job. Like it is, it's just that hmm. easy. <laughs> right, you look like you had a question there. I didn't mean to. No, I was, I was sorry. Off. And no, no, because I, I, uh, um, I don't, I don't, uh, I sold software. I sold the MR, um, you know, for, and, you know, we, we, we had a, an emerging um, ASC software. And uh, I will say like, it was really good at some things, but it, it didn't do everything because it's just like small surgery center softwares just don't do everything because it doesn't, you know, it's usually an add on. They have this. So find finding out that there's something on the market that was just made, nothing else. It's just made for surgery centers. Yeah. Because especially if it makes that. sense because it's, it's it's a growing market. There's going to be more surgery centers. That's well, and it's not mm -hmm. like Emily. It's not like you just have experience at one facility, so you're you're like you have this bias of your own experience. You've you've seen it at multiple places. So the same problems happen in every single center. The exact same problems. Being able to contact the patient, having to have 27 interactions with the surgery schedule at the doctor's office instead of being able to just do this online and communicate completely all through there. Um, the patient portal aspect of it, being able to do pre-admissions, they can, the patient can go in and do their own pre-admission portal. They can pay their bill ahead of time. They can pay their bill after. They can, they can enter in any of their own information. But if the doctor's office is already putting that stuff in, their email address and all of that, it's so easy to be able to communicate with the patient. And they like it. They would much rather do that than totally. have to answer questions on the phone. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing Emily and Soplo is so they're educated on what, how important it is to give us the correct, honest answers, too. So I've talked about that a lot in, on, on the program. And I think that that will help 
the overall system if patients know that they can be completely honest with us because this is the reasons why we need you to be honest with us. We may need to make sure that you're MPO so you're not going to aspirate during surgery, you know, and, and just educating them to that point and then so they're able to do so much more of their own. They're doing this in doctor's offices already. They're doing it in other, the dentist, the dentist has more advanced than, than ASCs do for Pete's sake. Totally. Yes. Totally. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, and that's like, that's an adjacent industry. I mean, it's healthcare, but it's not necessarily mm-hmm. like it's sort of right alongside a parallel, yet it's completely advanced compared so to advanced. every so place advanced. except maybe yours. <laughs> so, yeah. um, yeah. So if, 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 uh, if you were going to give advice to people who do what you do at other places, right? Um, what would you, what would you, what advice would you give them on anything? To other admins, I would definitely say, go back to your roots, figure out why you wanted to do this. Is this something that you love to do? You're going to have the best patient care, the best patient experiences, the best employee experiences, if it is truly something that you love to do. And if you don't love to do it anymore, figure out how to love it again, why you're here, and do it because you love it. You're going to have the best patient outcomes and and the happiest surgeons ever (laughs) if you're doing it for the best reason. I like that. I really like that. Rye, did you have anything else for Emily? No. Um, I, so, I, so now I, you can I, see how I get into the in the motivational speaking. Oh, I, no, I'm motivated. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't my question. I wanted well, to know how can somebody right, how like did you get. <laughs> I wanted to know how somebody who's a motivational speaker because you clearly are motivating. Uh, is also risk management services like uh, what? Oh, uh, because my favorite part is the building. To be uh, honest, okay. outside of my patient care, I love life safety because that is included in patient care. Yeah. I'm gonna have those best outcomes if I know in my heart and my soul that my generator is gonna turn on if the power goes out. You know, uh, I, I need to be self assured that, that all does of that my happen in South Florida. Awesome. Does does power go out in South Florida? <laughs> Every time it rains. Are, are you picking up? Some of my sarcasm is not coming across this transmission. Uh, yeah. Emily, this, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. I am so glad. I'm so glad that you you are out there on social media because that's how I found you. And that's why I reached out to you. Um, you're, you're just a very interesting and that's what we we try to get here is interesting people who can tell us who are doing things differently or more intelligently or sometimes thank you both right and uh i definitely think you are and i would have my knee scoped or or my head examined whatever it is whatever <laughs> medical procedure ryan thinks i need at your yeah. at your facility um thank you so much uh, you are welcome. That's all Thank I got. That's so all I had to buy. me onto oh. the show so much. And the software <laughs> will be announced and going to market in October, just for anybody that's curious. Okay. So, oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hey, if, if people want to reach out to you, that's funny. You're pretty easy to yeah. get to on social media. But if they Very wanted to and ask you about that, is there some place you would direct them? Do you want them to email you, ping you, or or Talk to the company. Is there something you would suggest if people want to learn about? Oh, they can. They can reach out to me directly at Emily and Soflo at Emily and Soflo anywhere on any of our (laughs) social media. I love answering questions. I get so many questions actually from from the normal people. Can the doctors eat during the surgery if they're hungry? You know (laughs) those kind of questions. And I'm so happy that people feel comfortable enough to be able to ask those questions because I think more than one person has those. Well, you're, so. you're, you're very, you're very intelligent. You're very hardworking, oh, but you're you. very welcoming, you know, like you're one of those, you're a warm person. So I can understand why people would ask you things Thanks. like that because they're comfortable. Not, they're comfortable being sort of, you know, uncomfortable asking like a question where they feel like they might sound mm-hmm. foolish, but they know that they're not going to be, they're vulnerable. You know, right. and they're comfortable right. being vulnerable around. No, you. I'm. I welcome I every that. single one of those questions. Absolutely, bring them on. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Ryan, well, you got you anything? Thank you so much. 
No, I just hope that. Thank you. I, I hope that more people end up like Emily. Yeah. <laughs> That's. I hope more people we, start running their surgery centers like you, or hospitals, or 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 any oh, healthcare you. facility runs thank you. like you. Because again, if you just do the right thing, it's amazing what happens. It's amazing. <laughs> We we need more Emily Spooners in healthcare and oh, the Savannah Bananas of healthcare. All right, so we just finished our, or you just finished listening to our second interview with Emily Spooner, um, CEO of the South Florida Surgery Center. Same day surgery center. Same day surgery center. That's why Mark is Mark usually does these intros. So, um, you know, my big takeaway from this was the software that we talked about towards the end of the interview, Mark. You know, uh, I you sold have, software. You have some experience in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah. You know, I'm I'm pretty familiar with it, and you know, I, I guess we'll we'll use software as a metaphor in this specific area. But, um, you know, it kind of spoke to me because it's software designed for a one specific purpose right and that's to serve the needs of ascs and i'm sure they did their market research and they realized the same thing that i'm about to say to you which is like there's over ten thousand surgery centers in the united states um i think it's somewhere between 10 and twelve thousand. you know as you just pointed out to me a couple a couple days ago 70 percent of them are independent Right. So there is an actual market to go after these surgery centers. And it's fascinating. If the software can do all of the things that they said they can do, I I feel fairly confident that as long as they can just not fail, which is, you know, they can gain a significant amount of that market share because what Emily was describing to me seems like an absolute it almost seemed fake, but I trust her. She wouldn't lie to me. Yeah. So and, I mean that that was my big takeaway. Yeah. That like yeah, it, yeah. just create create you can create niche products for specific areas, and yeah, if if there's only ten surgery centers, it won't work. But if there's ten thousand surgery centers, hey, that that's a lot of customers you can go after. Well, and, and to be clear, we don't we have no relationship with a software company. I'm not even sure I re remember the exact name. Of I don't it. remember. But when, name. but when, you know, somebody like me looks at their user interface and I'm like, well, hold on this, this seems really simple. This, I can look at this and go, Oh, I see what this does. I get how this works. That speaks to somebody um, that speaks to people in those jobs. And, and you and I both know there's 10,000 ASCs. There will probably be, 10,500 in another two years. And each one of them, for the most part, is changing, right? They're not doing the same procedures. They're doing different, more complex procedures that require more instruments, different types of anesthesia. Like it's going to become those 10,000 are changing every day and they're getting more complicated and they're going to need things like going, they're going to need things like this. And that's why it was really cool that she is the the pilot site for it, um, which is just another another example of why I found her fascinating when I started following her. Um, and, and and you know, and then again, it comes back to it lets her focus on the patient more because they're not spending time on the fifty seven phone calls to the doctor's office to confirm the surgery, make sure everything's right, got the cardiac clearance, all that stuff. It lets you focus on patients. It doesn't sterilize the process. It personalizes it in many ways. So, um, yeah, I thought it was fascinating. Um, so, uh, hopefully, ever pe uh, other people find her as fascinating as we <laughs> we did. So, Hope so. Um, yeah. All right. So, listen, in aim, you know, because the saying "all bleeding stops eventually." applies to both surgical patients and healthcare balance sheets. We'll see you next time on Sutures and Sense. See ya.